Ladies and gentlemen, as Sarah said, my name is Frank Hines. I have a business called Job Changer. Basically, in Job Changer, I really believe that it's up to each and every one of us to find a job that we're really loving or happy and, and happy with. Because it's only when you're happy in your work that you can actually really be true to yourself, true to your family. And I set this business up uh, four and a half years ago. And uh, today I'm actually going to talk to you about returning to work or changing careers. What are the key skills and qualities that you are looking for? And I believe, ladies and gentlemen, these are very, very important because most of us feel when we're in a job that we feel a little bit trapped. You, you, we define ourselves by our job. Perhaps you're a teacher. Perhaps you're a plumber. Perhaps you're a doctor. Perhaps you're a, 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 a council worker or whatever. But we define ourselves by what we are at. Where in reality, our skills, our abilities, our personal traits is what really, really defines us. And if you're unhappy in your work, you need to start searching for yourself to see what you actually can bring to the table. Because I challenge you, ladies and gentlemen, I believe you have a huge amount more to bring to the table than you actually believe that you have got. Who is this talk for? I believe this talk is going to have something to offer to anybody, even if you're remotely thinking about changing jobs or changing careers. Maybe you plan on returning to work, having me out of, work, out of the workforce for some time. I believe there's going to be points here that will be worth your while listen to. If you're unhappy in your current job for whatever reason, I really believe you should be listening to this talk. And if you go to the extreme, if, you, if you're in your job you hate, and you feel you cannot afford to quit, you cannot afford to quit for many reasons. Maybe you feel you're trapped because of financial reasons. Maybe you feel you're trapped because you cannot do anything else. I believe I have some points here that are worth your while listening to. As I said, my name is Frank Hines. I set this business up four and a half years ago to help people because I really believe we should find what is truly passionate about. And we really want to be the best that we can be and I believe you are entitled to be the best that you can be so that you can enjoy life and you can enrich the lives of the people around you. I spent 28 years working in the public sector. I, spent, I was lucky enough to have changed roles many times during that time. But all of that time, there was an inkling in me that I wanted to do something different. And I can certainly say, at least six years before I left, I had made a decision, at least I thought I had made a decision that I was getting out. And yet it took me six years to leave. The vast majority of people never actually make that decision. 80 to 85% of people are not happy in the work they're doing. They're not happy because of various reasons. Half of those, at least, and survey after survey would show this, half of those literally hate what they're doing. And I find, ladies and gentlemen, that most of the time when we hate what we're doing, it's really not what we're doing that we hate. It's what we're, or who we're doing it for. It's we feel undervalued, we feel unappreciated, we feel we're not respected, we feel there's people walking on us to get to places where they want to go while we're at the bottom of the food chain or wherever. We're doing something that's not inspiring for us. And I believe... I really challenge you, as I'm from today, to make a decision for yourself, to do something about it. As I said, I spent six years ha having thought I had made a decision, but yet I kept procrastinating. I always had reasons not to leave. My, my family needed the money. I couldn't afford to, to quit. I couldn't afford to move. What if the, new, if the new venture didn't work out? What if the move didn't work out? What if the job change doesn't work out? What if I'm in a worse situation? But until you do something about it, nobody's going to come and knock on the door, except in very rare situations, and offer you the golden, the golden spoon. So I'm going getting into the, the, the talk in terms of returning to, to work or changing careers. What are the key skills and qualities that employers are looking for? The reason I say this is because I think you should do an audit on yourself to see what can you actually bring to the table other than the specific job you're doing. Certainly if you're a plumber, you need to be able to change a tap to install a central heating system. If you're an accountant, you need to be able to do the books, you need to be able to prepare accounts, you need to be able to do auditing, you need to be able to do reports. Those are specific skills that go, to the job, go with the jobs, and we all have those, but those are not the skills I'm talking about. I'm talking about skills that are transferable from one organisation to another, from one organisation to your own entrepreneurial ability if you want to do that. And I'm talking about uh, basically the transferable skills that each and every one of you probably have and you may not even realise it. The first one I'm going to talk about, ladies and gentlemen, I've, I'm going to talk about seven of these. And then I'm going to talk about something I believe is even more important. And I'm going to invite you to do something. The first one I'm talking about, as I said, is being a team player. You know, even when you're in an office on your own, 
or maybe you're at home working remotely as a result of COVID and you feel very much isolated. You are almost certainly part of a team. You're working for colleagues. Somebody else is depending on what you have to do and you are probably depending on something that somebody else does. In that sense, you're part of a team. So can you demonstrate that you have team ability and team skills? Are you able to recognise key strengths in others so as to know when to lean on somebody else and when, to, when other people can lean on you? Do you provide motivation and leadership for, those te- for your team members? Second skill I'm talking about is a good communicator. The first encounter anybody has with an organisation, there's some form of communication. Most of the time it's going to be verbal communication. So can you verbally communicate well? Can you, can you speak clearly? Can, have you, can you show empathy? But, but written communication has also become extremely important, and particularly in the era of so much of social media. Being able to write understandably and clearly is, ex, ex, is significantly important. Maybe you need to be able to d- decipher a report, a complicated report, and, and distill it down into something simple that your colleagues and your teammates can read. So you're, don't underestimate the importance of being a good communicator. These are skills, ladies and gentlemen, these seven skills I'm talking about are skills that most employers find it very difficult to coach people into. But if you can demonstrate that you have these, it puts you ahead of most other people that you will be competing with. Third skill I'm talking about is analysis and problem solving. When I'm talking about analysis, I'm not talking about a mathematical equation. I'm talking about can you examine the, the, the facts, can you gather the facts and figures in front of you? and make an informed decision about a problem that needs to be solved? Can you think on your feet when you're under pressure? Are you able to find a solution to problems that arise? And they they could be very, very simple solutions. And anybody who's in any job, you don't even need to be in a job to to demonstrate your ability in this. You may be involved in a local sports club. You may be involved in your community. It may be something to do in your own family. But have you shown ability to to analyse and solve the problems that, that you encounter? Next one I'm talking about is leadership. You can be formal or informal leadership. And this, I believe, ladies and gentlemen, is where an awful lot of problems arise. A lot of very good managers are not very good leaders. A lot of very good managers are able to manage and dictate and direct people. But what's really important is can you inspire others to do stuff? And you don't have to be at a senior level in an organisation to be able to inspire others. You can inspire colleagues around you. You can inspire teammates. There's been an awful lot of success in recent years with the Irish rugby team. And frequently, how many times, when you're listening to the commentary, how many times do you hear about the great the leaders all over the field? While you have one captain and you have one manager, it's frequently referred to the important the leadership that may, maybe only a new player will bring on, comes onto the team. Or maybe as the game is closing out and they need to hold on to a lead, they bring in some of the more experienced players, the greater leaders, so that they can actually close out the game. Similarly, can you provide some sort of leadership? Can you demonstrate that you have developed some sort of leadership skills? And most of us have them somewhere or other. So I'm saying do an audit on yourself and see what you can find. Are you adaptable? One of the most certain things, one of the most certain things that we can all face in the future is change. Change is inevitable and change is ongoing. And we all tend to be resistant to change. We like the comfort that we're in. We like the comfort zone. And it, certainly in a large organisation, it's quite common that when there is an effort to bring in something new, that there is a mass protest and there's a mass effort to try and resist that change. Are you somebody who sh- can demonstrate that you are happy to embrace change? You may not feel overly comfortable with it, you don't have to feel overly comfortable with it. Though. But if you can show that you're actually willing to take it on and to work towards implementing the change, you're actually again putting yourself ahead of most others. Next one I'm talking about, quality number six, is are you creative do you use your initiative here I'm talking about are you, prepared, are you proactive when it comes to and it comes back to solving problems are you proactive rather than being waiting to be told to do something do you take the initiative upon yourself to address the problems that need to be addressed all of those six points that I've mentioned so far could, act, could be classified or summarised as being working smarter and not harder however from time to time We all know, and particularly when we look at what happened over the last number of years with COVID, crises arise, and maybe you need to combine the ability to work smart with actually working hard. So that is my my seventh quality. 
Are you a committed worker? Are you prepared to roll up your sleeves? Are you prepared to put the shoulder to the wheel? Are you prepared to help other teammates? Are you prepared to show that leadership? Are you prepared to take the initiative? Are you prepared to use all those other skills with that little bit of extra effort? Many people, I suppose, over the past number of years with COVID were working remotely. Are you the sort of person who will try and hide behind that and take as much time off during the day that you can because of lack of supervision? Are you the t- are you the- can you demonstrate that you have actually worked in spite of having very little supervision? So those are the factors, of, I believe, that put you ahead of everybody else. And before I move on to the next section I want to talk about, just I, I want to let you know that I have a couple of um, clipboards around the floor there. If you want to put your name and your contact details, if anybody, then from time to time, I, I put a little bit of information together, maybe a, a, a PDF or a, a video that I might be able to share with you. I, so if you're, if you're interested in hearing more from, from me about some of, the, and some of the work that I do, just put your details on those sheets. There's a couple of them around there. I've just summarized basically what I believe are the seven key transferable skills that we can bring to an organization. I believe the onus is on yourself to search for those and where you don't have them to try and develop those. But I believe there's something far more important because those are the factors that your employers, your prospective employers want. I challenge you to ask the next question. And that question, well, are a number of questions. But the first one is, what do you want? Have you ever thought about what you really want? Most of us drift through school. We join a course, we get into a course, either because it's what we qualified for or because our friends or someone told us it's a great idea. We have never really put any serious planning into deciding if it's what we want to do. And it, is it any result, any re, any, is it any surprising then that 85% of people are not happy in their work? So I challenge you to ask yourself, what is wrong in your career? What are your career aspirations? Have you ever thought about what your career aspirations are? What is holding you back from achieving your career aspirations? If you have no plan in place, it's very likely that you will not achieve, uh, achieve what you may have even dreamed, dreamed of achieving. And what should you do to address those situations? Steve Jobs said, the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking and don't settle. I'm challenging you to take that particular statement on board. If you haven't found what you inspires you yet, don't settle. Search. There is an opportunity out there. My biggest regret as regards the, having left the job after 28 years was about that I didn't leave a lot sooner. There, there are countless opportunities for us all out there. And there are countless opportunities for you to find what you really want. Big problem is, of course, many of us don't even know what we want. A huge problem is that no, many of us don't know what we want. And, I, and really, that is the basis of the work that I do in, in Job Changer. And recently, I've set up a, 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 simp, a very, very simple website. And I, if, if, if what I'm saying to you makes any sense to you, if what I'm saying to you makes any sense to you, I just suggest to you to check out that website, frankhinescoaching.com. There's a page on that website. It's called How to Quit the Job You Hate. You don't even have to hit, hate the job that you want to quit, but there's some information there. I'm offering you a free career discovery call, and literally, this is a career discovery call where I will help you figure out, put a, road, a short roadmap in place of what you want to do if you're, if you're thinking about changing at all. There's, a, there's, there's information on that page, how to quit the job you hate, about the discovery call that I offer, and there's also a link there for you to book that call if you feel, after you've looked at it, that the call is still of interest to you. So I encourage you to do that, um, and hopefully that I will get to see some of you in the near future. So ladies, Sarah, maybe that, with that, I think I will leave it. If anybody wants to ask any questions, I'll see if I can answer them. Thank you, Sarah. So th- thanks so much for that, Frank. I'm going to actually just kick off and ask one question straight away. And that is, I suppose, you talked a lot about skills and uh, that kind of thing. And I suppose, how do people find out what those skills are? How do they discover what the skills and what their strengths are and then how do they show employers that they actually have those skills if you could answer that first of all okay sir yeah and that's that's actually that's actually a very valid point and that's a very valid point for anybody who is unsure of what to do basically if you look at where you are in life whatever age you are in life you look back or you look forward if you look forward what can you do about it? You can actually mold the future. You can actually decide what direction to go. 
there's very little you can do about what has gone by other than you can learn. And this is where, Sarah, the, the key or the, the, the hints as to what you're good at will come. You look back and you study what you have done. Look at what you have enjoyed doing. Look at all the stuff that you've gone through. And that is where you're going to find an indication of what your skills actually are. It, it's not necessarily just a list of your job duties in your, current, in your current role. It's a list of how you've actually handled those things. And the stories behind those is actually how you're going to demonstrate. If you can show that in under, under, under pressure at some stage that you had to make a quick decision in a difficult situation and you explain the story of how, how you made that decision and how, what was the result of that decision, you can very, very quickly demonstrate to a, to a prospective employer of your ability to show your initiative and of your ability to be quick thinking and of your ability to be, be a good decision maker. Did that answer the question? But it's basically from the past and from your stories from the past and that is where all the hints will come as to where you want to go in the future. If you're, if you're planning a holiday, if you're planning a holiday, you're going to look at what you already know. You may not know about the country that you're going to, but you know something about what you would like. You've decided, I would like to go somewhere where there's sun, or I'd like to go somewhere where there's adventure. The reason you, want, you, the reason you know that is because you've already had some little taste of that in the past, and you decide that's where you want to go in the future. It's similar with a job. You look at the past to ind for indications of what you want, you want to go in the future. It's a little bit more complicated than that, but that's kind of the general gist of it. Okay, Sarah? Anybody wants to ask any other questions? Would anyone like to ask a question? I can come down and um, answer it for you or, or put it to Frank. No? Okay, I'll just ask one more question as well. I suppose in terms of fear, because I suppose a lot of people are probably scared to change that job and stuff like that. And then if they do change, what if it doesn't work out? So I suppose... You, I, I imagine your advice would be just to keep going and, and don't be afraid of the failure but have you any advice in terms of whether they you change your job but then you realise maybe you should go back or, or anything like that have you any experience of, of that happening ok again, again a very good question unfortunately that probably is the experience of a lot of people because they're in a job and they just see another job and say you know what that might suit me and they apply for it and with a bit of luck, maybe they get it, and then they move. And suddenly they're in a job that's actually maybe gone from the frying pan into the fire. Prob there, is, there is one inherent problem with that, is that there has been very little planning gone into it, other than, I want to get out of what I mean and into something else. Now, if you have done a little bit of homework, and done a little bit of strategic planning, having some sort of a vision, you may not know exactly what you want, but if you know some of the features that you want in your future career, the step, the next step you should take will be at least bringing you some way on the path. And then even if you haven't got the ideal job, you have got some little bit of extra bonus. You've actually learned some little bit extra from it. 100%, it's a, bit, it's a great reason. But have you done your homework? You will have a far, you're in a far better position. And I'm talking about homework, first of all, in figuring out what exactly that's what you want. Secondly, does, if you can have seven or eight key things that you want in your job, and you know that maybe your current job only supplies one or two of those. But if you, knew the, if you knew the new job at least is going to supply three or four, at least you're going to be getting some little bit of a step along the right way. And it actually does seriously help overcome some of that fear. Your next step should be a stepping stone. Not necessarily into your ideal job, but a stepping stone towards your ideal job. Does that answer your question? All right. And that, that is something, I suppose, that we do spend a fair bit of time on the planning process in helping people figure out what they want to do, okay? Okay, I think that's all my questions, anyone. Does anyone have any last minute questions or anything? No? Okay, well... Just, just before, yeah. before, I, before I finish that. Sorry, Sarah. Th look, thank, thank you very much, Sarah. I want to thank the, the, um, Kevin and um, Cormac and all the team for inviting me along here. I'm almost part of the furniture at this stage. I've been here so many times. But uh, normally I would be... My plan was to be here for one-to-one -one coaching later on and some of the people that would normally meet here would come to me on a one-to-one -one during the day but unfortunately I'm not able to, to remain today but at the same time if we normally do a 10 to 15 minute slot there with people if anybody wants to take down my number and if you want to follow up feel free to give me a call I will do that with the, you know whether you want to look at that that discovery call or not if you're interested in having that brief chat 
I, I can't do it here today, but I certainly can do it with a follow-up and a, with a phone call. Anybody's interested in doing it. Uh, so that's it. And I would really encourage you to take to, to, to t- take a look at that uh, simple website. Thank you. Thanks, sir.